In this video from IT Free Training, I will look at creating a central store for group policy. Although not required, having a central store will ensure that everyone in your company is using the same version of group policy. Before I get started, let's have a look at the history of group policy to get a better understanding of how a central store will work. Group policy contains a number of different sections. If I open group policy, you will notice the Administrative Template section under Computer Configuration and under User Configuration. For this video, I will be looking at this part. When Group Policy was first developed, the Administrative Templates part of Group Policy was defined using ADM files. Copies of these ADM files were required for every Group Policy that was created. So, every time the Administrator created a Group Policy, the ADM files would be stored with that group policy. If multiple group policies were created, the ADM file is copied multiple times, one copy for each of the group policies that was created. In a large organization, this can result in a very large sysfall folder. The sysfall folder is where group policy is stored to be replicated around the domain. You can imagine that if you had just 10 group policies, this would mean 10 copies of the ADM files. If there was a problem with one of the ADM files, updating it could be difficult since all group policies that use that ADM would need to be updated. In contrast, ADMX files are instead referenced by group policy rather than being stored by group policy. Let's consider a single group policy. You can see that the ADMX file is stored on the local computer or on the network in the sysfall folder. So, the ADMX files are stored locally or centrally on the network. This makes it much easier for the administrator to keep the ADMX files up to date and reduces the size of the sysfall folder significantly. I will now change to my server running Windows Server 2012 R2 and have a look at how to centralize ADMX files and keep them up to date. To see where the ADMX files are currently being stored, First of all, I will open Server Manager from the Quick Launch bar, and then select Group Policy Management from under the Tools menu. Once open, I will right-click on the Group Policy Default Domain Policy, and then select Edit. Once the Group Policy has opened, I will expand Policies, and then select Administrative Templates. Notice at the far right, retrieved from the local computer. Currently, the ADMX files are being retrieved from the local computer. Later in the video, I will place the ADMX files on the network. Either way, unlike ADM files that are stored with the group policy, storing the ADMX files either locally or on the network is more efficient. I will now open Windows Explorer to have a look at where these ADMX files are stored. I will open the C drive, then the Windows folder, followed by the folder Policy Definitions. Once open, notice that there are a large amount of ADMX files. Each ADMX file contains different settings. Each file contains a different part of the settings found under Administrative Templates in Group Policy. Having them separated like this makes them easier to update, manage, and expand as required. ADMX files are language independent. Notice the folder ENUS. This contains the English language interface files. Since the language files are independent of the ADMX files, this makes them easy to update. This also makes it easy for the administrator to add additional languages. In contrast, ADM files were language specific, which means the administrator had to choose one language. This made it difficult when there were multiple administrators around the world working on the same group policy, as they would have to agree on using the one language. Before I centralize the ADMX files, I will first download the latest ones from Microsoft. To do this, I will close some of these windows, and then open Internet Explorer. Once Internet Explorer has opened, I will perform a Google search for ADMX Windows Server 2012 R2. A link for ADMX templates for Windows 8.1 will appear. This link will work for Windows Server 2012 R2 as well, so I will select it. Even if you are using older operating systems like Windows Server 2008, the newer ADMX files can be used. 
If the ADMX file contains settings that the operating system does not understand, the operating system will simply ignore them. If you have trouble finding this link, I've included it in the reference part of this video. I will next press the download button and save the file to the desktop. Once the download has completed, I will close Internet Explorer and then double click on the file that I just saved. The install is a simple one. Once I'm past the welcome screen, I will accept the license and accept the default install location. The install does not take too long to complete. Once complete, I will close Setup and open Windows Explorer to have a look at the files that were just copied to the local C drive. The files are located in the folder Program Files x86 and Microsoft Group Policy. The next folder down is the highest operating system supported. Remember that ADMX files are backward compatible, so newer ADMX files will work on older operating systems. Once I open this folder, I will next open the folder Policy Definitions. Notice that there is a separate folder for all the different languages that are available. It is just a matter of the administrator choosing the language file or language files that they want. If I now scroll down to the bottom, notice all the ADMX files. This folder contains the most up-to-date ADMX files and language files. So I will select all the ADMX files and then select the folder for US English. Once the ADMX files and language folder are selected, I will right-click the folder and then select the option Copy. Now that the required files have been copied, I will next browse to the location of my domain's sysfall folder. This is just a matter of entering in double backslash followed by the domain name backslash sysfall. The sysfall folder is stored on each domain controller and replicated to all other domain controllers. In this folder will be the shortcut for the domain. The next folder contains the folders policies and scripts. Policies contains group policy and scripts contain scripts for the domain. Since I am working with group policy, I will open the folder policies. Under the policies folder is the folder for each group policy in the domain. Since there are currently two policies in the domain, there are two folders. The ADMX files will be stored in this folder. To do this, I will create a folder called policy definitions. Make sure you get the spelling of this folder correct as it needs to be exact. Otherwise, group policy management will not be able to access it. I will now open this folder and paste the ADMX and language folder. If I now go back to the policies folder, I have the two folders that contain the two group policies for the domain. I will select and open the second one. This is the group policy for the default domain policy. There are three folders in here. The ADM folder contains the older ADM files. Unless you are working with old group policy, there should not be any ADM files in here. New group policy will use the ADMX files. You can see that because each group policy contains an ADM folder, using ADM files causes each group policy to become quite large. Using ADMX files requires only a single copy of the ADMX files, which can be stored either locally or on the network. Below this is the folder machine. This folder contains all the settings for computer configuration in group policy. The folder user contains all the settings for user configuration in group policy. The file GPT contains the version information for the group policy. When changes are made to group policy, the version number in this file is incremented. This is how Windows knows the group policy has changed and needs to be replicated. I will now close Windows Explorer and go back to group policy management. Just like before, I will right-click on Default Domain Policy and select Edit. You will notice that when I select Administrative Templates, on the right-hand side is Retrieved from the Central Store. The ADMX files are now being retrieved from the network rather than the local computer. The ADMX files are the default and any new group policy that the administrator creates nowadays will be using ADMX. In this group policy, there is a legacy ADM file. If I expand Administrative Templates and select the container Classic Administrative Templates ADM, 
this will show only ADM templates that exist in that group policy. If there are no ADM files being used in the group policy, this container will not appear. This covers how to centralize ADMX files. The process is quite a simple one. Let's review what was covered in this video. A single group policy contains settings. These are stored in the machine and user folders located in the sysvault folder. ADM files are the older group policy format that are stored in the group policy. In contrast, ADMX files are stored in local storage or centrally in the sysvault folder. ADM and ADMX files contain the interface that you see in group policy management. ADMX files are easier to update than ADM files and also support multiple languages. ADMX is backwards compatible with ADM. ADMX is the future of group policy and most likely if you are using group policy you are already using it. Thanks for watching this video on how to centralize ADMX files in group policy. This is only one of the free videos in the group policy course. For the other videos, please see our YouTube channel or webpage. Until next time, thanks for watching.